When it comes to digestion of proteins, we end up with mostly amino acid molecules and most of the absorption of amino acids happen in the beginning of small intestine, which is duodenum, and the middle section of small intestine, which is jejunum. So we can say that basically 95 to 98% of proteins that are present in the small intestine will be digested and eventually we absorb the amino acid molecules mostly in duodenum and jejunum. And here in this image I am pointing out the mucous membrane of the small intestine. Here we have the absorptive cells and if I show you a closer view of one absorptive cell in the mucous membrane of small intestine, first we notice that amino acid molecules must pass through the epical surface, get inside the absorptive cell, and then they must pass through the basal surface to get into the fenestrated blood capillaries that we have in the connective tissue in the villi of the small intestine. However, please note that our digestive system is also capable of absorbing dipeptide and tripeptide. When we say dipeptide, we mean two amino acids still are held together with a peptide bond. And when we say tripeptide, we mean three amino acids are still attached together by peptide bonds. And when we absorb the dipeptide and tripeptide into the absorptive cells, then inside the absorptive cells, we do have enzymes that break down dipeptide and tripeptide to individual amino acids. And then we absorb the individual amino acids through the basal surface. And we start with individual amino acids. First, we notice that some amino acids are absorbed through the epical surface using some proteins that we refer to them as amino acid pumps. When we use pump, it simply means that this protein has to do ATP hydrolysis. By breaking down the ATP, it gets the energy to transport amino acid into the cell. This would be a primary active transport. However, some other amino acid molecules are transported through the epical surface using sodium ion symporter. Basically, this is a protein that transports both amino acid and sodium ion into the cell. This is a secondary active transport. So in general, when we focus on the epical surface of the absorptive cells that line small intestine, we notice that some amino acids are transported in by primary active transport using amino acid pumps, and some other amino acids are transported into the cell using sodium ion symporter, which that would be a secondary active transport. And now that we have amino acid molecules inside the absorptive cells and also we have sodium ion, the next step would be passing them through the basal surface. So when we focus on the basal surface, we see that on the basal surface of the absorptive cells that line the small intestine, we do have transporters for amino acids. These transporter molecules, without using ATP, they transport amino acid and pass it through the basal surface. That would be facilitated diffusion. So in short, we say amino acid molecules through the basal surface will be absorbed by facilitated diffusion. However, when we focus on absorption of sodium ion, we see that in the basal surface, we must use sodium ion pump. And we know that the moment we use sodium ion pump, that simply means ATP hydrolysis is required. That would be a primary active transport. So in the basal surface, amino acids are transported by a passive transport, facilitated diffusion. However, sodium ion is transported and absorbed by primary active transport. Now we focus on absorption of dipeptide and tripeptide. We notice that to transport these two different molecules into the absorptive cell, we must use hydrogen ion symporter. That simply means this molecule transports, for example, dipeptide and hydrogen ion both into the cell in the same direction. That's why we say symporter. And we know inside the cell, dipeptide would be broken down into two amino acid molecules and each one of these amino acid molecules will be transported through the basal surface 
by facilitated diffusion. When we focus on tripeptide, we see that its absorption is the same. Again, on the apical surface, using hydrogen ion symporter, we transport a tripeptide and a hydrogen ion. So that would be a secondary active transport. And then inside the cell, tripeptide is broken down into three amino acid molecules, which we absorb them into the blood capillary in the connective tissue by facilitated diffusion. And we know that when these amino acid molecules get into bloodstream, we send this blood through hepatic portal vein into the liver. Hepatocytes, the liver cells, take whatever they need, those amino acid molecules that they need, they take it. And obviously, we know that liver cells build lots of proteins, including plasma proteins. The remaining of amino acids that hepatocytes do not take out of blood and also what hepatocytes produce are released into hepatic veins, which we know hepatic veins are going to take blood out of liver into inferior vena cava. And then from inferior vena cava, these, let's say, amino acid molecules that we have in bloodstream will be transported to the right side of the heart, specifically right atrium. And eventually we know when right side of the heart send blood to the lungs, blood becomes oxygenated, then it comes back to the left side of the heart and eventually the left ventricle is going to pump this blood that is full of different type of nutrients to our tissues and system. I hope you find this helpful.